last time on Lawful Stupid. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I'm so, I guess when Shane's not here, it's like, what do we, what do, we do? Who what do we do with us, Shane? <laughs> um, so our characters, we, we ran into the, we, we were trying to make our way to, making our way to silence, walking fast until we ran into a barrier we could not get through. But then we ran into Findle and Frost and they helped to magic us through the barrier. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, we also ran into a castle full of demons as well. Yeah, well, they, we, they kind of kicked our butts or we got afraid and we ran away, so we just didn't really want to talk about that. Let's not talk about that. Let's not bring up hurtful memories. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, well, let's talk about who this is happening. Well, no, hold on. Hold on, we're professionals. Mm-hmm, let's mm-hmm. guests. So, we have a patron joining us. Yay! <laughs> Solid welcoming, Devin. Um, uh, Ink, why don't you introduce yourself, my dude? Not much to say. I'm just a listener and figured I'd support. So my intro was pretty good, see? That was a pretty good intro by me. Yeah. Hey, tell us about yourself. What do you like to do in your spare time? Where, where do you live? I mean, you don't have to give like exact address. You know, like, <laughs> state thing. Just, um, it, the last one is social. Like, <laughs> nothing, nothing important, you know. Oh, nothing so, important. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> card code on your credit card would be great. Don't have one. The so. verification code. <laughs> you nope. Know, the card. Talk, so, like you don't have to scratch that off. I definitely. Because I have the card now. Because he told me his address earlier, and I went there and stole his card. Oh God! You drove uh, eight hours. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, he's a little military. He has nothing else to do. Um, so, uh, Ink is uh, one of our patrons, and he has so generously donated with his dollar and dollars, and will be joining us tonight on a fantastical mission mm-hmm. of awesomeness. Fantastic voyage. Well, there's. I mean, there could be boats. This, this is what you make of it. This is D and D. You could go get a boat. You could buy a boat. You haven't spent gold could be anything in two years. I have any money. Well, I don't think you buy a book. I, I don't know the last time you've spent any, um, but that's not that's not important. Uh, what is important is um, we ended the last episode with you guys on the opposite side of this wall. About that, um, mm. Rowan and Atlas, when you step through this barrier, this wall, this magical field. It's not quite so simple for you two. When you step into this field, or step through this, like, portal, and or open entrance, so you seemingly thought, you, when you step through, it's it's not this instant transmission that you would have expected. This simple uh, walkway, you step into the torrent itself. Oh, no. And you find... Um, the world around you looks different. The barrier is gone. Everything is covered in like this, like light view, light light blue hue, and you notice that the world looks more peaceful somehow. Hmm. Um, you you may also see like a uh, Kristoff was here engraving somewhere. Um. <laughs> But the world looks more peaceful um, at first, and then you hear like the the winds like fill in your ears. It's almost like you're in the middle of a storm or a tornado, or it's full of rushing water, or that you've been thrown into a mass like vortex of chaos. It's loud and it's painful, and that all rushes by pretty quickly. And then you find yourself standing at the foothold of Oxbane. Like, you can see it before you, kind of, like, built into the torrent itself. Um, and from the from the gate, the threshold of Oxbane walks... Ink, please introduce your character's physical appearance, please. Alrighty. <sighs> He looks very tired. He has medium-length 
silver hair. Uh, there are bags under his eyes, like he hasn't slept in weeks. Hmm. Uh, he's rather pale. He has... Uh, hold on, I have it. He has um, tattoos on his body that look like they were carved into his skin, but seem organic in a way, like he was born with them. And his right arm is covered from shoulder to wrist in bandages and constantly looks like it's covered in hoarfrost. Oh. Yeah, so that figure uh, begins walking through the, the gate towards you and you that has to be somewhat startling because your brief experience and the stories you've been told from Kristoff is there are other people in the torrent. Oh, yeah, hell and well met, stranger. He doesn't say anything yet, but as soon as he gets closer, uh... You hear his voice say, Would... They see what's wrong with him because they're in the uh, torrent. Yeah, probably. They would probably see that very clear as day. All right. Well, when he gets closer, uh, he lifts his head, and you can see his mouth is sewn shut by black threads that seem to be constantly wavering in and out of existence. Oh, dear Lord, boy, what has happened to you? Oh, wait, you can't speak Rowan. What is wrong with him? Um, a lot. It's tired. Mm. And then, you know, there's the, the mouth thing. Uh, are you in immediate, immediate danger? No, I'm not in immediate danger. Uh, now, so, you can hear his voice yeah. in his head. In your head. Say, point of order... Oh, when yeah. he speaks, you hear it, but you don't see lips move. Like you hear it, like he is in your head hole, and that has to be jarring for at least Atlas. Atlas will, will like almost take two steps backwards, falling down. Oh, uh, Rowan, what is going on with this guy? I'm assuming something magical, because we're in the place where the you know, magic's made. Well. Not the only place magic is made. What is this place? Well, there was an engraving that says Kristoff was here. The only place that I know he's been without us recently is the Torn, which is what all this blue everything is. For sure. What's your name? My name is Valkyr. Where are we? I mean, we know we're in the tour, but why are we here? Why are you here? I've been here for some time now. I, I've lost track of the days, if you could even call them that. Are you stuck? Here out of just for funsies? Like... Oh, if I was here for fun, I'd be out a long time ago. That makes sense. So, so how did you get here? I don't remember. Okay, elephant in the room, I gotta know. The thing in your mouth, it's kind of weird. I, I'm hearing your voice, but your mouth isn't moving, and I just don't want to... What, what happened to you? Uh, the voice is a trick that I've mastered for a few times before coming here. That much I remember. Uh, as for why I'm like this, that's more of a story to do for where I'm from. Go on. Well, most people say that family is where you're from. Well, personally, 
I wish only half of that were true. I'm like this because of my father. Hmm. Like the good part is he the good part is the part you you don't want to be a part of. Oh no, he's he's the bad part. Hmm. He made me this. We uh, one of our dear friends also has a daddy issue, and I wish he was here. He might be able to help you through it. But at this juncture, he's just not available. Uh, so what? Of, uh, what of your mother? What? What is? Uh, what of her? I honestly couldn't say what happened to her. It's been. Uh, I want to assume decades since I've seen her. Mm. Well, uh, you you were coming from what looks like behind you, uh, Oxbane, uh, a town, a place I'm I'm very familiar with. Uh, have you been into the town? Many a times, but at the same time, no. Are there people there? Um, and Valkyr kind of like looks back at the town, like. You could say that. I'm. Sometimes there are, sometimes there aren't. Hmm. Indeed. <laughs> um. Uh, I, perhaps we should go out and go into town. I'm just not sure. I, this this thing since is this your doing, Rowan? You don't even have the loot anymore. Yeah. I mean, this doesn't feel like a witty thing. Like, we're not in a different time or place, so, like, just in the torrent. It's gotta be something weird with you. Yeah, I, I wish Christoph were here. I don't know why I'm saying that, but I, as much as I... He at least has experience him. here. Him. He, he yes. found his great-grand dragon dad. <laughs> that sounds kind of very like, funny. He's navigated this before. He has. Well, you know what? I have I have a bit of arcane power as well. And I will, I will uh, activate, or attempt to activate, to have Willow come out. Yeah, so you, uh, you focus these, um, these energies, this like, mindfulness that you've learned. When the, the molten rock begins to form over your arm, as it often does, um, this time a little bit slower, because it's normally, now that you've mastered it, like a quick transition. Um, you can kind of see it crawling across, across your arm, excuse me. And then, like, a bolt of lightning, red lightning kind of forms in your hand, and the axe forms, and then you quickly feel the weight of your decision, and you can feel that, like, the torrent is, like, battling at your very summoning of this axe. So, like, you're holding it, but you can feel the torrent, like, kind of, like, trying to drag it down away from you, if that makes sense. Like, Mm -hmm. you're standing there, and there's, like, this invisible, like current of water like pulling away it's like you're trying to hold the axe against a current of water that you can't see Mm. oh i'll have it you know for so long i'll try to hold it until i just can't and then i'll have it just dissipate yep and say oh i I can't control it i mean i don't know what's going on this is easy back at back in our world Well, that is the torrent for you. Some things easy, some things aren't. So you're familiar with the torrent. Do you have the ability to to call upon its powers as well? No, not in what you were doing. Um, My powers come from my lineage, more so my mother's side. Oh, so you're a sorcerer then? Yes. Oh, good. We know sorcery. Well, he... I don't know how all of this works. Oh, trust me, I don't either. And I've been here for... I don't know, half a decade? Maybe more? (laughs) Oh, fuck that. (laughs) What do you eat? How do you eat... I don't. I just wander and experience things. Well, that doesn't... I mean, have you ever had a hard biscuit a day in your life? <laughs> Mouth is sound shut. Fucking monster. <laughs> <laughs> um, so no, 
on, Biscuit. Uh, let's go into Oxbane uh, and see if, I don't know, maybe you put chance the same people who once lived there live there now? Oh, what are their fucking ghosts? It wouldn't be the strangest thing we've encountered, I'm sure. Oh, uh, so remember that time that I had that thing and I saw Yarg again? Your vision, yes, I uh, remember. Yeah, I'm just reminding you of that. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> They're strange shit. Let me remind you and bring it up. Scene turns. All three head into Oxbane. Alice's head drooped. <laughs> Dragging Axe with the weight because he wants to feel sad and powerless. <laughs> Mission accomplished. So you three uh, uh, walk through the threshold of Oxbane. And it's very familiar as you... Uh, cross the gate and you kind of walk in right up until it's not the castle that you're used to seeing Findle's tower the forge the the two 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 gnomes one flask like um all of these shops these places that you visited they're gone and they're covered in this like almost like a fiendish layer of like, um, I want to say skin, but that's not right. It's it's more... Like a film? Think, um... Is it like that stuff at the top of pudding when you, like, leave it out too long? Well, yeah, but almost like a hardened version of that. It's almost like somebody... Yeah, I think that's the best description that my mind will summon, because now that's all I can picture. But it's basically like they've reformed. It's almost like a coral... Um, just smoother. It's it's their essence that is formed over this. Um, and you don't see anyone. Except for, you start to see these, like, slender forms approaching, but they don't see you. It's like they're walking past you. Like, through you. And they're bipedal in nature and smaller than the fiends you've seen, but they are corrupted. They're, like, disfigured. They look like fiends, but almost either human or elf or tiefling. They're, they're like, warped. But they seem to be going past their, like, going about their everyday lives. That you can tell. Are we, uh, is there one near me? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, a group of them are, like, walking towards you, almost, like, looking through you. Uh, I was, uh, hello, hello, excuse me. Uh, we're not, we're not from around here. Um, so when you do that, it's, you kind of don't, like, they don't even hear or see you. They kind of, like, walk through you. And you can kind of, you can hear them discussing, like, everyday things. Like, the weather. Um, you can hear them talking about, like, the price of butter and stuff like that. Um, but they don't interact with you. I want to know how much the butter is here. I um, it, no, kidding. It, yeah, it is. Yeah, you do. You do yeah. that, and now we, the podcast takes a turn. As the first time, the boys have latched onto a side story. Yep. <laughs> side okay, what do we? Can you talk to these people? You've been here. Uh, been here, yes. Uh, usually, it's not as simple as this. Um, I've tried speaking with them. Usually just get the same result. It's like we're here and they're not, and at the same time, they're here and we're not. This mm-hmm. revolt mm-hmm. here begins to explain quantum mechanics to Atlas. So if you're not into that, just fast forward 40 minutes, because that's for the next 40 minutes. <laughs> I take out my pen and notepad. Where did you get a pen? In my fanny pack. Yeah, he's got a fanny pack. I was more thinking of Quill, because, like, pens. Anyways. That's its, its name is Pen. Oh, pen. okay. Pen. Pen. Smash cut to um, you. You boys are standing in in the middle of Oxbane, um, and it it kind of like shifts, like it's like a static moment, 
um, and it like, jerks left and right, and the image kind of changes on you, and Oxbane is in ruins. And you're standing above uh, a somewhat jarring uh, image of Kristoff laying over a sword with it like impaled through his body and slumped over that. And you can see nearby, uh, Kristoff is, um, like, not Kristoff, excuse him, wow, he's, he's dead twice. Um, you can see Rowan laying down, um, also dead nearby. And the, like, almost, like, frame-by-frame frame image of Atlas, uh, fighting one of these fiends, um... But, like, it's not the fiends you're used to seeing, the ones you've learned to dispatch so easily. It's more intense than that. Like, you can tell you can tell its power by how simplistic its features are. Like, they're not, like, large and, um, like, terrifying looking. It's more the person, the fiend, is terrifying by their own right. They don't need armor or anything like that to uh, display... Their strength. What is what's going on here? This we're reliving this thing again. Vakia, I mean, can you not? Can you talk to these things? You, you speak into my mind. Can you do the same thing with them? Oh, I've tried speaking with them. Although, and he's like resting on a spear now. I must say, first time I've seen the tiefling impaled with a sword. What do you mean, first time? Uh. Well, for all I know, this is a different machination of the torrent, but I've seen dozens, if not a few hundreds, of different outcomes to this city. What? Are you telling me there's other times when this, this city is, is not attacked and it's, and it's not in ruins like it is now? Ruin is a strong word. Do you see the buildings right now? They are they're just crumbled. Is there a time? Is there a, a, a I guess you would say an alternative where they're not this way? Where the people aren't dead? There are a few. There's some scant differences between them. Usually different banners and stuff like that, but for the most part. And you've seen... That's my friend, Christoph. You've seen him several times, but you said first time dead? Oh, no, not... (laughs) This will be a shock to you both if you're both not just some hallucination. Uh, No, this isn't the first time I've seen any of you dead, shall we say. But it's always here at Oxbay. Is that correct? Or, is, or does this place change too, like it has just now? And as he asked that question, uh, the, the terrain around you shifts, and kind of that st- same static um, shifting where the image kind of like horizontally splits, and then, Alice, you're somewhere you've never been. You're in the streets of a city you've never visited before and the city is under siege you can see fire in the background of this city you can hear the muffled roar of some war that's happening right around you but it's almost just it's one barrier away and it's this beautiful city set in the snowy hills of silence and you as atlas would not know this but you listeners and and enjoyers of the show would know this to be the kingdom of silence the capital city of silence and it is under siege but Valkyr would know that this is the kingdom of silence for it's his first visit uh, and where where's my vantage point if I'm if we're this you are this in the up. middle of the city but like like said so you can see the fires rising because like you were in the middle of like think um like a, like a downtown kind of situation where it's like alleyways and rows like it's a, yeah. it's a pretty thick city where you are but you can see the flames in the distance like alleyways over and stuff like that 
Now here, where are we? Uh, we are in silence. Not my first time. Certainly not going to be my last at this rate. Valkyria, what time period are you from? Like, when did you, you don't know when you entered uh, the torrent, correct? Or do you? Uh, it's difficult to say when. Uh, I've lost track exactly. That's what happens when you're. Well, before I came here, my soul was split in two. I haven't been able to age. Always fun. Then, so so what, what, what am I seeing here? Why do we keep shifting into these different scenarios? From what I gathered, it's the torrent uh, not really playing with lives, but showing what could have been and what possibly will be. Well, how is that any fun? It's, it's like, no matter what you do, you can't really change things? <sighs> Well, that's the thing. Just because it's set in stone doesn't mean you can't break it. I get that analogy. Well, I mean, what are we doing here? What what am I supposed to do here? I don't know. How do I get back? This literally the same scenario could be the thing happening. and, And here I am. Here we are. Oh, believe me, if I knew how to get back, I would happily show you the way. And almost if on a storybook cue, you hear this crackling in the distance. It's a crackling you've heard before, often between visions, um, but never so loud. But you can hear it in the distance, and it almost calls out to you. It's almost like the, the sound of wood splitting. Uh, and do we both hear that, or is that just a me thing? You both hear it. Or all three of you hear it. What was that? Have you heard that before? I've heard it a few times. Never quite found the ed- end. Think of it as a spool of string. You keep tugging, and eventually you find the source... Or it snaps. I've usually been led in circles. Hmm. Yeah, I don't get it. I, I still not. I don't get that. Is is it a? Maybe it's the way out. Maybe because you've been led in circles, you haven't been able to find the source of of Torin's power to get out. I don't know how any of this works. I'm just spitballing. Well. It's easier to get lost as one than it is three, so say we all go find the source. Well, I, I guess what do we? Where do you pick up your string at? Uh, that you say, where, where could you find that now? <laughs> and almost effortlessly, you uh, raise your right hand and kind of like pick up this thread, like this. Uh, light blue thread like it's a weaving of the torrent and you're able to like tug on it well usually just reach out and hope for the best then he's he's just gonna like roll it like between his fingers a little bit like just frost kind of spreading out both directions just just for a moment uh My best bet is to... Well, which direction do you find folk like going in? Uh, I... Actually, if we're in silence, and you've been... I'd be interested to know who who are the power players here, like, you know, is is it... uh, Do you know the people in this place? I don't know if you know the names who the ruler of silence is. And you hear this crack in the distance. It's another large sound of wood breaking. And it's almost like all of the blue that you're seeing, that you're like, your vision is filled with, vanishes. Almost in this like 
whirlpool heading in this direction north of you. It's like everything's being drained out. And as you um, look that direction to kind of see the image fading that way, the, the kingdom of silence that you've been standing in is gone. And it's refilled uh, like quickly and freshly with um, with this image of a throne room. A throne room that you've never seen, Atlas. Um, but again, Valkyr, it's not the first time you've been here and, and you would know that this is the throne of silence. And atop it, you see uh, a board um, almost lackadaisical Kristoff laying across the throne, drinking from a deep goblet of wine. Like with his, like that crown that Silence is known for, this simplistic band has been like jeweled and modified. And he's wearing like these lavish rings and he just looks bored. Uh, if I see him, I'm going to, even though maybe I've forgotten that I can't talk to you, I, I'm going to assume that I can. I'm going to run over and go, Kristoff, is that you? And uh, almost as if he hears you, he like looks your direction, but then is like looking through you and takes another deep drink from this goblet. Kristoff, it's me. You gotta hear me. You get no response. Valkia, can you talk to him? Can you try? I've tried. I've done many of things. Mostly try to pass the time. Tried freezing the goblet in place. Doesn't work. Um, as far as I can tell, this is a future from what I can assume. Just judging by his demeanor. Isn't one suited for him? That, or... It was placed upon him... I don't want to say... Granted to him. It seems more... Forced upon him. Christoph, I know, is, is not... Hungry for power. I mean, he, he doesn't even look like he's enjoying it. Yes, that's the thing. Uh, from what I've experienced, both in the torrents and out, if I can piece the two together anymore, uh, this is just one of his futures. Or a past. I've never been able to fully experience uh, which is which. But if I'm understanding things correctly, this seems like something to avoid. Yes, and how? Go ahead. How? Well... How can you know what, why is there even, uh, you know, with these visions we see? Because every decision we make is going to change. And so what I'm seeing here may not even occur. Why is this important to me? That's the torrent. And ask it a question and it'll give you an answer. Might as you say that. Not always be the best one. <laughs> as you say that, um, behind you, you can hear, um, Footsteps, and there's this. The Royal Silencian Guard is walking two dozen deep on each side of uh, three, three orcs, um, and you can kind of hear um, uh, muffled shouting of commands coming from Kristoff and Atlas. You recognize one of the orcs. Um, it's almost like it was you. But a version of you, a version of you that didn't suffer two years fighting fiends, two years closing doors, two years dispatching fiends. And then you don't realize who the other two orcs are, but they look familiar. Uh, they're almost versions of you. And you see the oldest of the three kind of be pulled aside, and he's easily 30 years their senior, 
and you watch as Kristoff lazily waves his hand, uh, bored, but still watching, as you, or this form of you, are forced to fight this other orc. I'm gonna uh, seeing the the, my, the version of myself that still has. I'm assuming his other eye. I will like touch my my hand to my my patch. I don't. Well, I, what's gonna happen? I'm, so I'm gonna just keep like waiting to see what happens. And so these two orcs fight, and they are they're not equipped with weapons, so it is a bare fist brawl, and. And they are going at it. Like, you've never seen two fully-blooded orcs battle this way. It's primal. It's 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 what you would imagine you look like when you've gone into a rage. Like, when you've gone into that mindless state of combat. Um, and it's you watch as um, you topple this other orc below you and... You have your hand to his throat, and you can, like, see the distress on the older one's, uh, the older orc's face. And Kristoff lazily raises a hand to stop it before kind of making the thumbs down gesture. Um, and you hear this loud crack. This, it's almost ear shattering at this point. And in the distance, you can kind of see this, this white opening. Um, begin to form in this bluish vision that you've been granted. That's not me. Well, just judging from the looks of you, that is you, albeit from what I'm assuming, a past were... I assume the three of you never met? I, w- I mean, I wouldn't know because I do know them. Fair enough. Well, then, so this doesn't come true anyways. This is already too far too far gone. And, and I don't know what I'm doing here. Let me ask you something. So this... this rope thing you talked about. When I thought about being in, in the throne room, we were transported here. So if I just think about where I want to go, does it take me there in the world? Uh, it takes you from what I understand, and if you are right, it will take you to a point in the world where the torrent can reach. But isn't the torrents and everything? And isn't that what it does? Well, the only real way to find out is to, as before, ask. I want to go to where the doors were created. And you hear a loud shattering of this, like, corporeal wood and cracks begin to form around your vision and you appear in a circular room the three of you appear in a almost room of judgment where you look up and you see you see um these these pillars above you they're almost like seats in nature um they're large and i mean they are much much larger than you 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 have to imagine from what you can view what you can see they're 40 and 50 feet tall these pillars um and you're looking up and and you can see the three of you can see in these like blue shades that there are there are these forms sitting atop these pillars and you see the image of Sinlor. The Sinlor you've been taught about, the Sinlor that you've heard about, um, the centaur with the broken horn. 
you see uh, the description and the images of Lynn that you've seen, the, this uh, tree-like, leafy figure with wings and a, and a, a motley mask, um, and then you see this simple shadow figure, and, and here's the interesting piece. To Rowan, this shadowy figure looks like a more handsome, more clever version of Rowan. To um, Bulkir, it looks like um, bulkier, but less scarred, less damaged. Uh, a more normal life has been led. And to you, Atlas, it looks more akin to um, the the version of Atlas who lived on a farm and had a very peaceful life and a very normal upbringing. Um, and then you see another throne is empty. Or another of these pillars is empty. And, and as you're looking across these pillars um, and kind of seeing these different forms, um, you see a fifth pillar. And so it, in the center, you stand between five pillars. And you can hear these muffled discussions, um, but you can't make out the words, but you can hear these like heated discussions or arguments. Oh, this is probably not going to work, Valkyrie. Have you been here before? Maybe. Uh, once well, before, twice. I've lost count. Well, let's give this a shot. Hello, can you hear me up there? And you watch as almost like a fight begins to break out between Wen and Sinlor and this other shadowy figure. Um... They're like getting off, they're like stepping up out of their seats and kind of like stepping in. Like, you guys are having to like move to the center um, for fear of being like stepped on. Oh, these, these are real as I'm moving, trying to like duck and dodge. Now, yeah, these, these are, these are real figures. These are not the ghosts we've seen. Well, real or not, it's. They certainly pack a punch if you get hit by one of them. And he says, pack a punch, and I go, yeah, you're right. And so I will punch the nearest leg. Yeah, so you uh, you step forward and you wind back and, and you swing, fully expecting to hit this this uh, this foot of Lynn, and you kind of like stumble because you've thrown your weight as you slide through this vision. As much as it felt real, as much as it feels real, and as much as your internal senses tell you to move and to act, it's nothing more than echoes and shadows. Oh, what? Okay. Uh, it seems like I'm somewhere important. And this is where the doors are created. And I'm looking around. I see anything like, like those doors. Um, you, you don't see those doors specifically. But what you notice as you look down, the very, like floor you're standing on is like this ornate pattern this ornate like um imagine a big circle and if you've ever seen the things that the uh oh man I, my culture should, could be bad so i apologize in advance but i believe it's like the buddhist that do like those sand paintings that are like very intricate very like beautiful and they're they're painstakingly put together um it's like that, and it's like this image in this picture, and you can see um, there's there's from the pillar where Sinlor is, there's like this gold and beautiful like image that's being so woven in from his pillar, and from when there's like this green one that has like these threads and trees and like uh, like a lot of uh, script that you can't read, it's in a language that you don't understand, and then from um, the shadows, there's like these dark, almost like uh, opaque figures that are sewn in and from uh the one of the empty pillars there's this like uh bronze sand glass or uh, hourglass image that's kind of being woven in and then there's a from the fifth um seat there's like this um dark red that's woven in with like um you can see like two people intertwined as they're talking, and in the center, there's the circle that you're standing on. It looks like the the material that the doors are made of. 
Oh, oh Valkia, do you, you still have your rope? Well, not my rope, but I have... Oh, well, and he kind of like just reaches out and plucks the air and like, I assume like, it looks like plucking on a harp string. Like, just the thread appears for a second. And I will, uh, I'll say, I, I want to be, I want to be heard by the gods. So you say that when you like pull on the string? Yes. Yep. You get no response. Okay, so maybe this doesn't work quite like I think it does. Uh, Rowan, can you shoot a burst up into the air so that the gods up there in those towers can can see or maybe hear us? Uh, you know what? I think I might take a page out of an old friend's playbook and then I shoot Mage Hand up in the air. Yes! Uh, so you do that, um, and you, hey, you notice that, like, casting Mage Hand has never been so effortless. In fact, this, this hand that you make is, like, huge! It's, it's arguably as large as them. Um, and you feel these, like, cracks begin to form below your feet and around you, and there's these loud, like, splitting wood sounds... And, and it's almost like you can hear iron itself shattering in two. And that's not right for, like, metals. Um, these, um, these noises begin to fill your ears, and you can, again, in the distance, see, like, this, like, white opening begin to form. And, like, the image that you're surrounded with, or surrounded by, it's, like, being pulled that direction. Like, draining down a drain. Valkia? Yes. I think that's a way out. But I, I really need to be able to talk to these things. Well, you probably can't speak to them here, but if that is your way out, maybe you'll have a better time trying to contact them where you're from. Well, I mean, I, maybe we've gathered some information here that'd be important. Uh, yeah, I don't want to lose this opportunity. I, I, you've been here how long? You, well, you don't remember. Uh, so long it's enough. Been at least a decade. <laughs> long enough to not pass up this chance. Uh, yeah, I wish I do wish Kristoff were here. Okay, we uh, Rowan. I think we gotta go. Fucking yeah, let's go. I'm not getting stuck in this place. Valkyrie, are you with us? I'll go as far as I can. Okay, uh, well, you lead the way. Useless. I'm guessing your rope thingy has something to do with this. Oh, it's not my rope, it's just the torrent. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you guys, uh, pull on this rope and, and begin towards this, like, opening, and there's just these cracks all over the place. Um, and as you, you walk that direction, the scene is fading, and you see the crack getting wider, and scenes, the scene around you vanishes. And then there's like this almost montage of scenes around you, and, and you see this image of um, Cecilia, the Reclaimer, and she's being beaten, like beaten by other people in armor. And you see Rowan step in between them, and he begins to fight these reclaimers. And you see a scene of Avia, and her and Kristoff are fighting. They are full blown casting spells at each other. And you watch as like Atlas like tries to stop the combat. And then you see a scene of Henry, and he's building something, and he's working on a weapon. And you see just the pain on his face. And then you see one last image as you approach this, this like opening, this, this, this crack, this, this maw in the torrent. You see Kristoff and Atlas and Rowan all sitting together around the table in the Red Roof Inn of Oxbane. And it looks peaceful. And you watch as they age before you. 
slowly at first, um, but then the years begin to stack up, and you watch as as Atlas begins to get old first, and kind of hunches, and wrinkles form, and he kind of slumps over onto the table, and then you watch as Kristoff withers away to age, and you have uh, Rowan sitting there alone as, as age and time stacks up on him and he too slumps forward and that image fades and then you see Teresa and you see Yard, the corrupted version of Yard, the cursed version of Yard, and you see this elf with a scythe and wooden armor, a dual scythe and a wooden armor. And you see a very familiar looking tiefling, which you surmise as Pallas. And you see Kristoff laying at Pallas's feet, motionless. And as you approach this crack, you kind of like feel it pulling you in. You kind of feel it like tearing at your very fibers of your being. Um, and Valkyr, you watch as Atlas and Rowan are being pulled, but you don't feel the same draw. And in fact, the closer you get, the, the thicker the air becomes, the harder it is to like keep pace with them. Yeah, eventually Valkyr just stops and just watches. Um, and uh, Valkyr, this is, you know, you know this is where you part with them. Valkyr, what are you, what are you doing? Uh, I'm afraid I can't follow. Well, you're going the place I can't follow. Why not? Oh, it's okay. right there. You're so close. Yeah, we're, we're almost out. Almost out for you two. I would assume there's someone waiting for you on the other side. Yes, yes. Well, we hope. <laughs> uh, Ink, this is a good time to give your items. Uh, okay. So, Valkyr kind of... <laughs> Valkyr rummages through his bag and uh, pulls out three items and unable to really uh, walk towards you two, he just lightly tosses them towards Atlas and he said, uh, he'll say... Just keep true to yourselves and remember that not everything is set in stone. Wise words. We make our choices. And as you say that, um, you're yanked through this hole. And let me explain. You guys have been through a lot in the past two and a half years, three years. You've some of you have nearly died. Some of you have met gods. Both of you have been pummeled to fuck and back. This has been the most painful experience you've ever experienced being yanked through this tear. It is like somebody pulled apart every piece of you and shoved you back together. And you find yourself on the other side of the wall. Now I've got Rowan's butt. Dang it! I'll take it. Oh, that's an improvement, <laughs> my man. <laughs> but now the backside of your butt, or your butt and your, your pelvic area, just like full of his backwards. clothes. Oh. <laughs> well, it's just full of his clothes, right? So, But he has your cod piece now. But clothes Can everywhere pack? else. Does he have my fanny pack? I mean, of course. It's, that's, where your, it. that's where your pelvic is. So he's got my Santa Claus clothes on, as we're saying. And I've got his midriff. That's true. That's true. <laughs> In fact, you come out with less clothes. No. <laughs> um, um, yeah, 
you look at these items, I assume, that you're handed? Absolutely, because I imagine, like, he, he, I'm Santa now, and I'm going to give these gifts when we get back into the That's real world. perfect. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you notice that the, the gift that kind of calls to you, Atlas, is a wooden box carved with a knotted tree whose branches and roots curl to meet in a circle. Um, and uh, along the sides have, like, these runes that uh, kind of give you the vibe of protection. Uh, and they frame this this uh, orcish script to say, uh, Ken to Ken, faith should stand true. Um, and then uh, there's uh, a gift for uh, our Christoph boy. Um, and it's a sturdy, a sturdy drinking gourd that has a uh, piece of wolf pelt wrapped around it. Tied by a braided belt of leather. Um, do we either you know giant? Ooh, let me look. Uh, I, mean, be I, would, I would say okay. no, because that's not something I would uh, typically pull as a language. So no, no. Uh, no, I do not know giant. Do you have comprehend languages? As a spell. Do I? You do. Uh, <laughs> you do now. <laughs> Devin says, you do confidently is I, not I, true. Uh, oh, yeah. Actually, I do. I thought you did. Um, so, you're able to cast Comprehend Languages and you understand that um, the the runes uh, that are carved into the lower half of the gourd read, when men meet and fight, but are a stout heart than a sharp sword. And Atlas, you hand Rowan a carved well bone that has uh, an elvish, like, um, like engraved in it. Um, not all clouds that darken the day bring rain. And it's like, uh, it looks like a ship is sailing through a sea of stars. That's pretty cool. And it's, uh, it, as you like further examine it, Rowan, you can tell that it's like a whistle. And um, your, your mechazord shows yeah, up. Yeah, so when you do that, um, these, like, dancing lights begin to, like, dance around you. Um, they, like, form, like, they flow out of this, like, uh, whistle. Um, and they kind of dance around you. And they're almost like, um, like stars, but if you look, um, closer, they're, like, small boats, like, on the ocean. Oh, that's dope. I opened my box. Um, so when you open your box, um, what's in the box? What's in the box? box? Uh, you are greeted with a pile uh, or a dozen hard biscuits. Yes, I eat one immediately, and I get one of the boys. So good. Oh, the best. Yeah, yes, I just I'm, thought Shindo. Uh, I, I, I take this biscuit as I um, as I drink heartily. As I finish drinking, draining my my gourd. Where did you get these? Oh, uh, boy, do we have a story for you? And that's where we're going to end the episode um, with the three boys holding these new items uh, and Kristoff like looking more like amused and like. Uh and Atlas and Rowan more looking exhausted from the pain and the traveling that they've done for the last hour Um, and that's where we're going to end the episode and I want to say thanks to uh, Ink for coming up with those items Um, yep came up with even what they (laughs) yep I even came up with what they do as well (laughs) even gave them little descriptions I Dude, like those, are, those are cool things. It's very specific. I like the touch you put on them. Uh, well, I'm sure I, Christoph is going to love that gourd. <laughs> can never get drunk. Is that the big? No, it fills up with whatever drink he wants. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not. It fills up with whatever food you want. I just assumed it was hard biscuits. You're right. It's always hard biscuits. Oh, man. Oh, dude, when Teresa's tome comes out, think of all the things I'm going to pull from that. I don't know if you'll give me the effects. Thindle's pie. Cast the spell immediately. At random. On yourself. <laughs> that one I'm into. That one I will give you. Uh, 
No, I can. I will say uh, we'll work out a mechanic for that, mm-hmm. Devin. Because mm-hmm. I love that. We'll work out a thing where um, when you pull from the box and you pull from Teresa's tomes, you think of her like wonderful cooking. We can roll a die, and then yeah. you get a random item. Oh from God! It'll be all of a sudden, deck of many things. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, yeah, but the cookbook is not nearly as powerful. Um. So, and and to be fair, uh. When this episode airs, the cookbook is already released, boys. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So if you haven't made everything in there, um, well, Teresa is just disappointed with you. She put a lot of hard work in that. She's very sad. But I have a box now, and I, so I'll eat all the things. Yeah, you eat all the things. Uh, can I use, like make my whistle my fucking spell focus for bard spells? Um, technically an instrument. It's like Ocarina of Time. Did you get rid of the gun? No, Alice still has the gun. Okay, Alice still has it. Well, I can um, only I can only use Eldritch Blast out of that, though. That's true. Yeah, fuck it. I love it. Yes, that whistle is your arcane focus for when you do, like, spells. Loose spe- bard spells. Dude, you yeah. can do a Pona song now and call out your moose friend. You could do the song of rain and call out your moose friend. Well, it's not not great. It's a whistle. So let me play in uh, Blow My Whistle Baby. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. So. <laughs> there That's we so go. Yeah, so it plays every single time. Nice. I love it. All right. Segway into ending this episode. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, um, Ink, man, uh, well, welcome and thanks for playing. Uh, also, if there's anything you want to say, like, is there anything you want to plug, there's a shout out you want to give, like, hey, mom, hey, mom, I love you. <laughs> yeah, whatever you want to do, this is your stage. Nah. you be like, Jeff, you suck. <laughs> nah, I don't have anything to plug in or shout out or anything like that. Karen from accounting, you're the worst. You'll never hear this, <laughs> but you're the worst. All right, well. Uh, hey, hey, same- let's do this. What are, what are your predictions of the characters? What's going to happen to our characters? Give us something. What do you think is going to happen? Oh, jeez. What's going to happen? Uh, let's do this. What would you want to happen? What would you want to happen to the characters? Tell us how you would kill Kristoff. Yeah, tell us. I don't know. He's already a dragon, so can't really do anything with that. <laughs> uh, he could always find kobolds. I would, I would not turn him into a dragon to kill him. I mean, you seem Game of Thrones. Spoiler alert: that happens. Dragons die. <laughs> it's Game of Thrones. Everyone dies. It's true. Also true. No, I'm just expecting Kristoff to like accidentally turn into a dragon, and there's like just a whole bunch of kobolds who just make a cult following him. <laughs> yes. Just uh, uh, take a dose here. Uh, it's about how to kill Kristoff. Okay, so arm your kobolds. Okay. <laughs> Not really how to kill him. (laughs) Just kidnapping him, making him a god. (laughs) Well, technically, here he is. God of the Kabolds. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's good. Uh, So, this episode is forever away. um, And I'm just assuming we crushed Min Max Mankind. Just, we broke $10,000. Uh, Jason from Critical Dice had to shave his beard. It was magnificent. Call it white. Um, but looking towards future things, uh, Dralicon is coming up. Oh. Uh, just a short few weeks away until I can see your beautiful faces. Um, in realism, it's forever away because it's like eight, nine, ten weeks. Um, but if you haven't like gotten a ticket to draw on, you should. You're gonna miss out if they are not available to per- be purchased because they're gone. I'm sorry. Maybe next year. Just you can also, follow definitely Instagram. scalpers. So just like yeah, you know, outside, just, I mean, just go sit at the entrance and just yeah. wait. Oh, we'll come out eventually. I yeah, would yeah. scalp my ticket for sure. <laughs> Well, hey, you whoa, wait, Alex, man. you don't have to buy wait. a ticket, bud. You're for you don't free. have to buy a ticket. <laughs> oh, I already did that. It's time to do our live show. We're like, where is Alex? Like, okay, give me a guy. And some guy walks up and just like sits down. <laughs> oh, well, Alex said I should sit here, and he like shows us Alex's ticket. Um, 
I think I'm a bard. <laughs> yeah, and then I swing from the rafters like, ha ha, barded. Yes, please. Yeah, so uh, we roll a roll for humanity. I'm not sure which... Um, uh, which... I am, actually. Uh, huh? So while, oh. while I get that information to you boys, um, what I would like to do is I would like for you to um, determine who is going to make this roll between the two of you um, by guessing... Oh. Oh, hold Seven. Hey, whoa. whoa, 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 god damn. All right, listen. Snape kills Dumbledore. What? <laughs> Snape kills Dumbledore. I want you guys to a laser light keychain. Yes, the I want the most interesting slash realistic guess for the ending of Game of Thrones. Hum. Hmm. Humma humma. <laughs> Uncle Terrible this back and takes the throne. Okay. And Hodor holds the door for him. Well, no, you're supposed to be doing different guesses. <laughs> I know, but we always work together. I love it. Uh, <laughs> fine, you both can roll. You both roll together for a roll for humanity. I need you both oh. to roll a G20. Alright. I got an 11. Um, I got a 9. Okay, well, Atlas's roll takes the, uh, the the cake, and that's 11. And our uh, charity for the month is Smile Train. Smile Train is a beautiful charity, and they help provide kids who can't afford dental health care to have a smile that they're proud of. Because uh, both them and we believe that no kid should be ashamed to smile. Great. Friend and agree. You know, yeah, and because and, the smile is super important to building confidence. Um, as somebody who had uh, lots of uh, teeth issues growing up, um, I went through a lot of dental thing that this is super cool. Uh, I would love to, like, I would have loved for this to be around to, um, like, for people. I, I was very fortunate growing up, but, like, I know there are other people that weren't, and so Smile Train is just a really cool uh, charity. Um, but yeah, I just, I, and I love that. No kid should be ashamed to smile. Yeah. That's super good. Yeah, you are great. <laughs> Makes me happy. <laughs>